Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean an over-the-top beautiful day here on this gorgeous paradise of a planet here in the shithole state of Texas. In the middle of the shithole state of Texas, we have this glorious piece of paradise along the banks of the Guadalupe River and New Braunfels, Texas, and it is a glorious Monday afternoon. It is Monday, March 13th, 2023, and uh, good Lord, I uh, need to step somewhat gingerly into, uh, <laughs> in, into today's chronicle of the collapse, where uh, we're going to start off by saying congratulations to my Good buddy, Vegematic. Here's one of those Texas beauties jogging by on this beautiful day. Uh, Vegematic. We can all congratulate Vegematic for finally, after 11 years, hitting 1,000 subs on his Vegematic Deluxe YouTube channel. Uh, good for you, brother. Uh, Glad I could help. We had, I guess we had 63 people step up to the plate and subscribe to uh, my buddy Vegematic, but one of my good friends who did not step up to the plate and subscribe <laughs> and subscribe to my good uh, friend Vegematic is my equally good friend Mark J. Mark J. from... Uh, is he from East Bumblefuck or West Bumblefuck, New Mexico? So I have been friends with Mark J and Vegematic for, we've known each other. I guess we, we've all, well, Mark and Veg don't know each other, but I have had the great pleasure of actually getting to spend some time in the physical realm with uh, my buddy Mark J. Uh, but Mark and Veg are, are, are two of my buddies. We do not see eye to eye on everything. All right. Uh, but at least we have the commonality. The one commonality that we all three share is we are not breeders between the three of us, or is it among the three of us, not one human being is on this planet thanks to either me, Mark J., or Vegematic. So that is the most important thing. Uh, I have never known if Mark J. is or is not a doomer. So uh, Mark and I, we agree on a lot of things and respectfully disagree on a few things. And Veg and I agree on most things and not so probably respectfully disagree on a couple of things. So, uh, anyway, my guess is Mark J. and Vegematic might, in some ways, agree on more things than, than I agree with. You, you know what I'm saying. Uh, as far as I know, the two men have never met, and I don't think they ever will, because this was Mark J.'s uh, response. I'm just going to read this. Uh, I'm going to read through in my comments, and then we're going to sit here and rant on this beautiful day. But take it away, Mark J., and uh, explain to uh, us why you are not going to subscribe to the Vegematic Deluxe channel. Take it away, Mark. I don't buy the humans deserve to go extinct argument, and anyone making that argument, such as Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, should speak for himself rather than using the pronoun we. I think of the 12 boys and their coach who were trapped on a small ledge two and a half miles inside of a flooded Thai cave a few years ago. 
the odds of successfully res rescuing them were slim. They faced certain death from drowning or suffocation. An 18-day rescue operation was undertaken, which 10,000 people from all over the world, including 100 divers. Any activity underwater in a cave is exceedingly dangerous, but the boys and their coach were rescued. One diver lost his life. <coughs> that diver is reason enough for me not to spit in the face of humanity, and God knows that living with humans can be a prolonged headache. But humans are inherently good, and one can find plenty of evidence of that if he wants to. One can consider that, one can consider that or one can stay in a quagmire of cynicism and despair, which will compromise his health and make the world a worse place than it already is. Young people, don't walk away from a fatalist. Run. Read what Bruce Lipton has to say about the relationship between thought, mental and physical health, and the earth, which is also a living thing. The science is in on this, particularly the medical science. One is foolish to ignore it. Leaving out, leaving out such conditions as war and starvation, happiness is a choice. Life doesn't suck. The way in which people live life sucks. Kindness is my religion, says the Dalai Lama. Having witnessed the destruction of his country by the Chinese, that man has seen more horrors and suffered more than most people in the world. But he's not cynical and doesn't call for the extinction of humanity. He wrote a book titled The Art of Happiness. He is radiant and is not depressed because his attention is not focused upon himself. And Mark closes with a quote from Henry Miller, quote, the man who takes himself seriously is doomed. My response to Mark J, well, actually, my response was not to Mark J, it was to Henry Miller. Uh, so, my response to that comment was, if not taking yourself seriously is the antidote to being doomed, Vegematic and I are not doomed. As to the rest of humanity, we shall see. The reason humans need to go extinct has nothing on any level to do with the, quote, inherent goodness of individual humans. I always thought Ronald Reagan would be a fun guy to run around with. And this was my response back from Mark. I did not say that not taking oneself seriously is an antidote to being doomed. It is an antidote to despair and depression. Well, it was Henry Miller who said the man who takes himself seriously is doomed, not Mark J. So, no, you did not say that, Mark. Henry Miller said that. But anyway, it is an antidote to despair and depression. I will get back to this in a minute. If a species with inherent goodness isn't worth preserving, then nothing is worth preserving. What is so fucking great about a world without people? Well, that will uh, take me about 12 years to answer. What is so fucking great about a world without people? Nature itself is cruel beyond measure, with nearly every species being prey 
and or predator. I've read that some 99% of the species that have lived on this planet are now extinct. Humans weren't around for that. Droughts, floods, fires, disease, ice sheets, earthquakes, etc. have always occurred. Dinosaurs lived here for 160 million years, slaughtering one another. <laughs> yes, to what end? They did not produce a single symphony. Hmm, kindness, compassion, love, etc. are concepts in human consciousness, and many humans practice those dynamics. Those dynamics don't seem to exist in nature's vocabulary. I'm having a very hard time biting my tongue. We're going to let Mark have his say. Nature just crushed to death 56,000 people in Turkey and Syria. A horrible way to die, to be sure. Misfit though I am in today's society, well, that will be other than not being breeders, uh, which is one of the reasons that me and Veg and Mark are all misfits in today's society. Uh, that's the other thing we have in common. Misfits. Misfit though I am in today's society, as much as I prefer to be alone, my faith is, is, is in humans and their unlimited potential. Humans, as the late Michael Talbot so clearly articulated, have the potential to create a paradise on this planet. Nature hasn't done it. This is largely an inhospitable planet. Humans, I will be, you better believe I will be getting back to the Senate's nature. Let's see, humans have the potential to create a paradise on this planet. Nature hasn't done that. All right, we will get back to that. Humans have evolved, and there is not any reason to believe that they won't continue to evolve. Well, anyway, and if quantum physicists are to be believed, the universe itself is still evolving. There are many dynamics at play, many of which we're not even aware of. You are decided about how this will end and should end, but you don't know how it's going to end. That 100 divers voluntarily risked their lives to save 12 boys and an adult trapped in two and a half miles of flooded cave says something extraordinary about the human species, something that doesn't exist in any other species. Whether you, I don't know whether he's talking to me or Vegematic, but I at this point, whether you or anyone else recognize its value and significance would depend upon the mindset that you're in. The late Leo Buscaglia was of a different mindset. He loved people. And, by the way, humans will never go extinct. They may go extinct on this planet, but they will live elsewhere. Death does not exist. Ignorance is the curse on this planet. Ignorance and hubris that humanity doesn't know what it is. Sadly, few adults are willing to learn anything. Socrates said that, quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. Harsh words, but not without truth. And then we close with a quote from Shakespeare. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Might you become master of your own fate through choice, no matter what the stars say? 
My uh, short response to Mark before I launch into this rant uh, was, nature has not created a paradise on this planet, but humans have the potential to do what nature has so miserably failed to do? Obviously, amigo, you and I live on two different planets. I will have to dig through Milton's Paradise Lost for a quote, but the acorn scene in Don Quixote says it all. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we might close out this rant with the acorn scene if I can find it uh, on this computer since I don't have internet out here in paradise. But, uh, good lord, guys, uh, I could, uh, uh, the thing about what I absolutely love about about Mark J is uh, he uh, <laughs> the man as as I say he has never been self righteous he Mark J is a very I, I mean Mark J is one upright righteous individual and he has never despite uh, the 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 things we disagree with. Uh, he has never once in his life taken a self-righteous uh, attitude, at least never copped a self-righteous attitude with me. Uh, and this is just one of the many reasons I have great respect uh, for Mark. Uh, has, has Vegematic ever copped a self-righteous? Well, maybe over the uh, the the Canadian truckers. See, this is the Canadian truckers. Is uh, I cannot imagine two people being farther apart uh, than Veg and Mark J on the Canadian truckers debate. I will let you guess which man uh, was on which side of that. Uh, I was on Mark's side on that. I'm going to guess that Mark J. and Vegematic agree that capital punishment is inexcusable. See, the reason that I know that Veg, uh, you know, he was... Uh, he, if, if Mark's not familiar with Veg's shtick, I don't think Veg wants humans to go extinct. I know that Vegematic is an ardent ardent opponent to capital punishment for any reason whatsoever. For any reason. I'm thinking that Mark J uh, is probably an ardent opponent to capital punishment. Both of these men know my opinion that we need more capital punishment on this planet, not less. But that is a whole different rant for a, another time in another channel what my views on uh, the shortage of capital punishment on this planet are. But anyway, as I say, it's just, it's so fun to uh, get in these friendly debates with, uh, with, you know, with people you respect and who don't just uh, go off flying off into these ad hominem arguments. So, uh, since I would never have an ad hominem argument a, 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 uh, against Mark J, I will uh, just just make a few comments. Uh, you know, when I was reading about these this rescue of these twelve kids. I think Netflix just came out with a documentary. My guess is Mark J. watched it. I haven't watched it. I'm not arguing with, with one thing he says in there. I have never argued uh, in my entire life against the inherent goodness of most people. This is why I love people, but I hate humans. You know, that they, these people... I don't know if Mark J. I think Mark J. has the intellectual acumen to to when I say 
I, I actually am a hell of a lot more sociable and probably uh, am more lonely when I'm not in the company of other people than Mark J is. My guess is that Mark J is more comfortable being alone and not dealing with other people uh, than, than I am. And probably he's a lot more comfortable than Vegematic would be uh, not having the company of other people. But uh, anybody who does not understand the difference between people and humans. When I say people, when I'm talking about my clueless, lovable friends, I'm talking about people. I am a people person. It's just humans I don't care for. If, uh, if humans could go extinct and humans uh, and, and, and people could be left behind, you know, if the humans could go and leave the people behind, just leave behind the inherent goodness of, uh, of most people. Uh, I, I am all for that. I have never uh, made the statement in my entire life that most humans uh, are inherently good. It, but you can be inherently good and completely clueless. Completely clueless. So anyway, when I was reading this about this rescue operation, I don't know why I flashed on the cove. Do you remember that documentary? I think it won as either a whatever it was an Academy Award or an Emmy Award about the best documentary of the year. You know about that dolphin slaughter uh, over there in Japan, which is still going on where on a planet of 8 billion people, there's probably about 8 people making a dollar bill off of that dolphin slaughter over there in Japan. And there's probably 8 people, so 1 1 billionth of this planet putting a dollar bill in their pocket, okay? And maybe... There's, I don't know, are there 800 people in Japan actually eating that dolphin meat uh, from, from those butchered dolphins in the cove? And I'm thinking, well, okay, if, you know, any, so while this guy, uh, the, the, this, this person who, these people who went to rescue these boys uh, were hailed as heroes and held up as examples of the inherent good of humans. If you try to go in and save those dolphins from that slaughter, okay, if, if, uh, if, if this man who died trying to save those boys... Uh, had died trying to save those dolphins. Uh, he would have been a hero in my book, but if you, if, 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 if whatever, these people trying to save those boys went in there and tried to save those dolphins, they would be arrested heavily fined, certainly kicked out of the cove, probably thrown in prison. Is I, I, I don't know why I flashed on that, uh, on, on the cove, reading this thing about the inherent goodness of humans, thinking about, uh, you know, those eight people making a dollar bill off of, off of that dolphin slaughter every year, because I remember that I did a rant. Here is a good reason why humans go need to go extinct, and I will still hold that up to this day. The fact that that dolphin slaughter uh, goes on every year, right there is the reason for humans to go extinct. Um... Uh, you know, here, uh, 
humans are inherently good and one can find plenty of evidence of that if he wants to. Hell yeah. As they say, I, I would like to hang around with Ronald Reagan. You know, uh, Adolf Hitler loved his dog. Uh, Adolf Hitler was, was very kind to his dog while he was murdering six million people. Um, and I had to think about, am I a fatalist? <clears throat> yes. Uh, and that. Now, also, this whole thing uh, about happiness being a choice. Now, and, and Vegematic won't uh, mind me saying anything. I honestly don't know if uh, I honestly don't know if uh, Mark J has, has ever been depressed or not. I honestly don't know. He's never mentioned it to me. Now, Vegematic and I have both suffered from a lifetime of, uh, of depression. I mean, serious uh, clinical depression. You know, I have been suicidal uh, right up to the line many times. Uh, I know, Veg and I know what depression means. What was Vegematic saying uh, just a couple of weeks ago in one of his rants? I wish I could. Uh, rem I wish I could remember the quote, Veg. Uh, please leave in a comment your exact quote. For people who have never been depressed, to make to to comment on people who have who have suffered a lifetime of depression. Okay, what did Veg say? Uh, sh just shut the fuck up. People who have never been depressed have no clue what it feels like to be depressed. They have no clue. There is no way for someone who has suffered a, 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 the living hell of a lifetime of clinical depression to... Ex to not ex just to describe it, all right. It, it, it's like describing the color purple uh, to a blind Martian, you know, to someone who has never seen the color purple. Uh, uh, Mark, I, 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 I love you, brother. But uh, anybody thinking that happiness is a choice, has never been depressed, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Happiness is not, well, okay, I'm going to meet Mark halfway. Happiness might be a choice. Depression is not a choice. And, uh, I have already said about that I was quoted that I was responding to Henry Thoreau, uh, the man who takes himself seriously is doomed, and uh, Mark responding back that uh, that not taking oneself seriously is an antidote to despair and depression. If I had to choose outside of myself, uh, literally, I, I'm not I'm not making this up. If I had to choose the human being I know that does not take himself seriously, would be Vegematic. Uh, the, the, the man, he has the most uh, self-effacing uh, sense of humor that, that I have ever heard. Uh, I try to have a self uh, self-effacing sense of humor. Vegematic uh, does not take himself seriously. I don't know how seriously Mark J takes himself. Uh, I don't think, uh, again, he, it's, he certainly doesn't cross that self-righteous line. And so I kind of put those two together. Uh, I, I honestly don't know, Mark, uh, how seriously you take yourself, brother. Uh, but Vegematic does not take himself seriously. I don't think. I don't think. So, 
if the antidote to despair and depression is not taking yourself seriously, obviously uh, Vegematic and I both are uh, both are failing. Uh, the antidote to despair and depression is not taking this stuff here. Uh, I was actually this kindness is my religion about the Dalai Lama. Mark, I don't know whether, did you see that thing? I, I It's either on YouTube or Netflix. I wanted to do a rant on this, but I didn't want the Dalai Lama giving me a copyright strike on my YouTube channel. But anyway, it's either on YouTube or Netflix. There's this, what it is, is an interview with the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. This uh, very lucky journalist gets the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu together in a room to talk about basically the secret of happiness. And uh, I would love, you can find it on YouTube. I think it's on YouTube, it might be on Netflix, but somewhere out there, just Google interview with Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu on, you know, how to stay uh, optimistic and happy and upbeat in, in, you know, in what's going on on this planet. And that's another rant, but I really like their advice. They both agreed to just turn the news off. Don't pay any attention to the news. There you go. And you will be happier. I don't know whether uh, whether the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu recommend uh, spending time in nature. Uh, spending time in nature. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, this long second comment, uh, what is so fucking great about a world without people? Well, uh, we have about four billion years of history. Uh, yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> Dinosaurs did not produce a single symphony. Yes, kindness, compassion, love, etc. are concepts in human consciousness. Those dynamics do not seem to exist in nature's vocabulary. Mark, I love you, brother. Come on. Uh, to, I, obviously, uh, Mark has never watched some David Attenborough thing about mother elephants or mother whales or whatever uh, to say that that uh, for a for a, a radical vegan to tell me that no other species outside of humans can exhibit love and kindness and compassion for their fellow members of their own spe I I anyway I'm not I I have no time for it here is nature just crushed to death 56,000 people in Turkey and Syria no bad building codes crushed to death 56,000 people in Turkey and Syria okay no other I I wonder how many, I read this long, it might even be a book, this long article talking about, uh, about earthquakes in particular, they are not a natural disaster to any other species on the planet other than humans. A, animals are very rare. I mean, there might be some, you, you know, some, I, 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 I don't know, some jackrabbit getting buried in an avalanche. You know what I'm saying. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, earthquakes are not a natural disaster for any species on this planet other than humans and any of our domestic animals that might be inside the buildings 
that we live in um uh, Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to, uh, let's see, humans have evolved and there isn't any reason to believe that they won't continue to evolve and if quantum physicists are to be believed, then the universe itself is still evolving. Well, I have no problem with the universe still evolving according to quantum physics, but if population ecologists are to be believed, you better damn well believe uh, that there are all kinds of reasons to believe that humans will not continue to evolve. Uh, I guess you could say dinosaurs are still evolving. Uh, if the like like looking at chickens or something, humans will never go extinct. Uh, we will see about that. Will they go extinct by 2030? Unfortunately, uh, not. But obviously, guys, uh, good lord, I am already up to 35 minutes. I could. Uh, this quote, and I'm gonna, I'm going to shorten some of that middle stuff about Michael Talbot. So, humans have the potential to create a paradise on this planet. Nature has not done it. This is largely an inhospitable planet. This is an inhospitable, is largely an inhospitable planet to humans. Uh, to sit there, I mean, lo 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 looking out this window here in the shithole state of Texas, telling me that nature uh, ha ha has not created a paradise, so it's up to humans. It is up to humans to create a paradise. Humans have, uh, uh, you, 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 you know, I, I don't know if, uh, Mark, are, are you trying to, <laughs> if you're trying to push my buttons, brother, by telling me, uh, telling me that nature has never created a paradise in four billion years on planet Earth, but don't worry, the humans are here. The humans are here to upgrade nature. Uh, you know, where? who was it who said you take every bit of, what was it? There, there was some great quote. Uh, who was it? Somebody help me out here. You know, talking about all, every symphony, uh, every great painting, every piece of artwork that humans have ever created uh, in their puny little existence, do not hold a candle. Do not hold a candle to one blade of grass. There is more paradise there is more love, compassion, and beauty in one blade of grass than in every single creation that humans have ever made combined. So, uh, anyway, if I can figure out how to do this on this computer, uh, since Mark closed out with, uh, since Mark closed out with, uh, who did he close out with? Shakespeare. With, uh, Shakespeare. Uh, we're going to close out with Miguel Cervantes. I don't have... Milton called up for a quote, but we're going to listen to Miguel Cervantes, who is a contemporary 
of, uh, of Cervantes. And uh, this is the famous soliloquy when, I'm, I'm not going to read all of it, when uh, Don Quixote and his noble squire Sancho Panza found themselves in the company of a bunch of goddards, goat herders. The word is goddard for goat herders. Uh, and they were sitting under the oak tree and uh, Don Quixote was roasting up some acorns and had this uh, soliloquy. Uh, okay. So he and uh, he and Sancho have a little spat, and then uh, <laughs> all right, take it away, Don Quixote, talking to your noble squire Sancho Panza and the Goddards. After Don Quixote had satisfied his stomach, he took some acorns in his hand and examining them with great care raised his voice to speak words like these. What a happy time and a happy age were those that the ancients called golden. <clears throat> and not because gold was gotten in that fortunate time without any trouble, but rather because the people who lived then did not know the two words, yours and mine. In that holy age, all things were commonly owned. To find their daily sustenance, they had only to raise their hands and take it from the robust oaks, which liberally offered their sweet and ripe fruit to them crystal clear fountains and running rivers in magnificent abundance offered them their delicious and transparent water. In the fissures of boulders and the hollows of trees, the diligent and prudent bees formed their republics and offered to any hand for pro without recompense the fertile harvest of their very sweet work. The robust cork trees shed their lightweight bark without any artifice other than their own courtesy with which people began to cover their rustic houses built only for protection against the rigors of the heavens. Everything then was friendship. Everything was harmony. The heavy plow had not yet dared to open nor visit the pious bowels of our first mother, for she, without being forced, gave everywhere from her fertile and broad bosom that could fill, sustain, and delight the children that possessed her then. Fraud, deceit, and wickedness had not as yet contaminated truth and sincerity. Justice was administered on its own terms and was not tainted by favor and self-interest, which now impair, overturn, and persecute it. Arbitrary law had not yet debased the rulings of the judge because in those days there was nothing to judge nor any one to be judged. Close quote. Uh, all of this long speech, which could well have been spared, was given by our knight because the ancient because the acorns brought the golden age to his memory, and he was moved to give that useless speech to the Gotthards, who, without saying a single word, were listening to him open-mouthed and amazed. 
Sancho Panza also remained silent as he snacked on some acorns and visited very frequently a second wine skin that had been suspended from a cork tree to make the wine cool. And there you go. But anyway, I need to get my silent, long-suffering noble squire. And we're going to go uh, see some of these abundant crystalline rivers and fountains. We're going to uh, go look at, we're going to go take a walk in this inhospitable planet uh, with some of my clueless moron lovable fellow humans mainly these little cuties in bikinis get out there and enjoy this inhospitable planet while wow, you still can are you ready my noble squire come on now let's go we're off to enjoy a beautiful planet on a beautiful day. Bye, guys.